Hi, my name is Dr. John Duyard, and I want to talk to you today about some interesting research that links prediabetes to increased risk of Alzheimer's. In one study, people who had just borderline diabetes or prediabetes had a 70% increased risk of developing Alzheimer's disease in their life. Half of the people who are over 85 have Alzheimer's disease. One third of the American population, that's 100 million people, have prediabetes today, putting them at significant risk for developing Alzheimer's disease. We know that increased blood sugar in our country is an epidemic. It's directly linked to the number one killer, which is cardiovascular disease, and it's also now being linked directly to Alzheimer's disease. You know, when you have a lot of sugar in your blood, the body doesn't know what to do with it. The brain really doesn't want that sugar in the blood. And the body becomes insulin resistant. The brain becomes insulin resistant. And the sugar stays in the blood. And we've talked about, I did a whole series of newsletters on blood sugar. The excess, excess sugar in your blood goes right into belly fat and hip fat. And it also turns into cholesterol. But it also glycates. Glycation is a process in where the proteins and the sugars stick together and they clump the blood, make the blood very, very thick. And there are these things called advanced glycation end products, or AGEs. And these advanced glycation end products are very damaging. They're the leading cause of arterial disease and cardiovascular disease, kind of why it happens. It causes oxidation in the body, in the arteries, and in the brain. Studies with, uh, in, in autopsies of people with Alzheimer's disease had significant amounts of these AGEs in the brain compared to normal folks. There are very dangerous AGEs that are directly linked to damaging certain neurons that control cognitive function and memory. There are also AGEs that are linked directly to depositing beta amyloid plaque in the brain, which is the hallmark for Alzheimer's disease, is plaque building up in your brain. Now, there's also an enzyme called the insulin degrading enzyme. And what that does is when the sugar gets really high in the blood, uh, the, the body says we've got to get rid of that sugar. So it has this enzyme, insulin-degrading enzyme, that takes the insulin out of the blood so there's not excess sugar trying to drive into the brain. Like I said, the brain becomes insulin-resistant and it can't take that kind of sugar. So they have this enzyme to help remove it so we don't actually damage the brain. Problem is, is that this enzyme also removes beta amyloid plaque from the brain. So if the brain or this enzyme is too busy dealing with the insulin, then it's going to leave the plaque and the beta amyloid plaque can accumulate in the brain and that can predispose us again to Alzheimer's disease. We have this thing called insulin resistance of the brain and studies at the Oxford University in England have been studying coconut oil as a new kind of energy supply for the brain. That actually coconuts are as a fat, and these fats burn as ketones instead of sugar. So when they give the brain ketones instead of sugar, the brain starts to function better. Cognitive function in folks with Alzheimer's was improved, where when you give them regular sugar or glucose, the brain can't take it. The brain has stopped being able to use sugar. So when you start eating all the sugar you're eating, Think about what that's doing to your brain. It overwhelms the brain, and eventually the brain, according to some studies, is saying, I just can't take it, and now maybe I have to use another fuel supply. But boy, that also is linked to AGEs, which cause damage, that lay down plaque, and can sometimes do some permanent damage to our brain function. So what can we do? Well, clearly what we can do is protect ourselves from blood sugar issues early on. I'm a big fan of getting your own glycometer, test your blood sugar in the morning, and make sure those numbers are actually not in the danger zone. Anything over 100 uh, milligrams per deciliter is considered prediabetes, but really all the current research says that the safest zone is going to be between 70 and 85, and anything over 85 increases this risk of glycation and also excess damage to arteries and even brain tissue. Uh, also, remove the hidden sugars. We, gosh, there's so many hidden sugars, dried fruits and all the healthy sugars, molasses and honey and agave. These are all sugars. They go right into the brain. They go right into the blood. They damage the artery, and they actually cause this increased risk of prediabetes. Proper exercise, really important. Great studies that show that exercise really does work, and I've written articles about how to exercise. Please tune into that. Meals, not snacks. Eating meals, 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 meals all day long never gives your body a reason to burn its fat. 
You need to be a good fat burner. If you have breakfast, nothing to lunch, your body will burn fat in between. If you eat all day, your body will just eat the meals you had, you, you're eating all day long, and you'll never give the body a reason to become a really good fat burner. And of course, we want to lose weight, but more importantly, it's the fuel that's stable and calm that our brain really requires. There are many herbs that we can look at, and I invite you to go to my website and research some of these herbs that support good and stable, balanced blood sugar uh, and brain function. Uh, uh, gymnema, one of the classic Ayurvedic herbs supporting blood sugar. Turmeric, um, chromium, a mineral that supports blood sugar. Alpha lipoic acid, omega-3 fatty acids, all these things. Please do your research. Herbs, Ayurvedic herbs like Bacopa and Brahmi supporting cognitive function. Uh, I list those and cite the studies, those on my website as well. So please do your research. Please know that there's a direct link now between sugar issues which are rampant in our culture, and the increased risk of Alzheimer's boy, and that's a risk I wouldn't want to take. Uh, please check out the article where I go into detail uh, that's associated with this video on my website at lifespa.com. Thanks for listening. I'm Dr. John Villard.